If you're looking to do anything within Red Dead Online, you need money. There is no other way around it. As long as you have money coming in, you're able to do the various different activities. And the cool thing is, once you buy into them, they also have their very own returns. So you're able to make more and more and more. But unfortunately, it's very difficult right at the beginning because you're limited. You're limited on resources, so you're not able to buy into all activities. And this is where it becomes an incredibly hard grind. This is actually where most players give up. That's why in today's video, we're going to be going through exactly how you can go from zero all the way up to a hundred thousand dollars relatively fast. First off, when you first start Red Dead Online, you need to go through the introduction. This is where you'll go through your character customization. And with this, it's worth taking your time with. This in itself isn't going to increase the amount of money that you can make, but if this is something that you rush and you're not happy with and you want to go and change it again later, it will cost you. You'll then go through the introduction, meet Hawley, meet Jessica the Clerk, and you'll also be given the main missions. Now the main missions are broken down into three different categories. You have honorable, dishonorable, and those that don't even matter. If you're looking for the most efficient way to go through this game, it's best to go for those which are honorable first and then do dishonorable later, and then you can do the neutral whenever you want. Reason for this is because it's a lot easier for you to be honorable to then go into a town, kill loads of people and become dishonorable to unlock the missions rather than completing dishonorable missions and trying to be as nice of a person as possible for you to be honorable. And after completing all the missions, you'll have around 10 gold bars and potentially around a thousand dollars. So you just need 99,000 left. And this is where things take a slight turn because even though you don't have enough gold to buy into any of the fun activities, there is actually something that you can do right at the beginning, which most people don't know about. The collector role is by far the most profitable role within the game. But as we've just said, we've got 10 gold bars and in order for you to buy into this, you need 15. But you can actually start collecting these collectibles without even being part of the role. You are still able to loot bodies and there is a chance that you can pick up a collectible and within the open world you will stumble across a couple of these where you're able to pick them up. The only reason that you need to buy into the collector role is that's the only way in which you can sell them. But this does mean whilst you're going through the main missions and towards the end, once you have 10 gold bars and you're trying to build to 15, you can still go through collector sets. Not every single one of them because you still need specialist equipment to unlock certain things such as the coins. You must have a metal detector and you must have the pennant and field shovel. But for other collector sets such as your tarot cards and family heirlooms, you can actually use the Jean Rope collector map which will show the exact location and before you've even bought into the collector role, you can head over to that location, pick up the collectible and store it within your satchel. And there is no limit to this, apart from the limit that everyone has of being able to pick up 10 of each collectible. So in order for you to get a head start and start making money, what you need to be focusing on is the tarot card swords, the tarot card pentacles and the tarot card family heirlooms. These are the most valuable guaranteed sets and you can go through them without needing special equipment such as as the metal detector or the field shovel. It'll probably take you an hour to complete all three of these sets. And from that, the tarot card swords will give you $286.50. The tarot cards pentacles will give you $287 and the family heirlooms will give you $292.50. But of course, this does mean that we still need to be building up our gold. And I recommend going through your rewards, your daily challenges and completing stranger missions. And unfortunately, there's no easy way to do this. It is a bit of a grind. The most important thing is to start your daily challenge streak. And once you get that up to seven days, it starts to increase. This will then increase further on 14 days, 21 days. And once you get to 28, you've reached the max and it will reset right back to the beginning. But of course, you don't want to be doing this over 28 days. Personally, I prefer the awards. There's some awards in here which are incredibly easy to do, such as selling 100 herbs to the doctor. This can take about 15 to 20 minutes to do, but you're going to get 40 gold nuggets at the end of it and it is repeatable. Do this enough and you'll be building up your gold in no time. You can actually do this one whilst completing stranger missions. The stranger missions themselves, as long as you're taking your time with them and completing them within the last 30 seconds, you'll get anywhere between 16 gold nuggets up to about 36 gold nuggets, unless there's a bonus for that week. 
but remember that we do only need five extra gold bars because at that point we have 15 we can unlock the collector and we can sell all of those sets which at this point should hopefully give you thousands of dollars you're able to pick up each collectible once every single day once the day finishes it resets where you're able to pick them up again so you should be able to get one of these for every single day that you play but we're not stopping there even though the goal for this video is to build up to $100,000, you still need gold. You need gold to buy into other roles. And there's three other roles that we're really looking at. The Trader, which costs 15 gold bars. The Moonshiner, which costs 25 gold bars. And a Naturist, which costs 25 gold bars. The only role that's not really needed is the Bounty Hunter. Now, the Bounty Hunter itself is great for making gold. It's the only role within the game that will give you active gold. And what I mean by that is with every other role, you can hand in collector sets, complete deliveries, or even complete missions. And it doesn't really do anything. It gives you money. And in some cases, it may give you other items such as samples or even materials but it does not give you gold bounty hunter does hand in a bounty dead or alive you will be rewarded with gold at the end but as for this video we're talking about making money it's not actually that great for cash so how does the trader moonshine and natris tie into this money making method well, with the trader, you're able to get a completely new business. This is the trader business. And for this, you're going to need to donate animal materials. You're going to need to complete resupply missions. But after that, Cribs is going to be generating goods within the background. Every 50 minutes, you're going to be able to get 25 goods. And then you'll be able to do a delivery. And upon selling, you'll be able to make a pretty decent amount of money. But apart from getting materials and doing resupply missions every 50 minutes, this is entirely passive. You can even order supplies once you have money coming in. The Moonshiner does the exact same thing. It's in fact a tier two to the trader. That means that you must enter the trader first in order for you to unlock the Moonshiner. But this one becomes even more passive because once you set it up, you don't need to do resupply missions. You don't even need to donate materials. You just need to go into your Moonshine Shack, go downstairs, talk to Marcel, order the strongest strength in Moonshine that you have, add flavoring and walk away. After 48 minutes, the Moonshiner will be ready for a delivery where you'll need to do a delivery and you'll get anywhere between $200 to $250 depending on the flavoring that you selected. And that brings us on to the naturalist. The naturalist itself isn't actually a good moneymaker. In fact, if we're just looking at it from a financial standpoint, it's one of the worst within the game. But it does offer legendary animals. And once you are a high enough level, you can continuously keep on doing these, getting free of these every single hour, which is more than enough to keep you occupied. But when you go into these legendary animal missions, it will tell you that you need to sedate and sample the animal. You can ignore that because what you're going to do is bring out your shotgun and you're going to kill it and ultimately eventually skin it. Now this isn't mission failure, you will still be put back in free roam, but Harrier is not going to be happy with you. The good thing though is that at this point, you can then take it all the way over to your trader, donate it, and this will save you a lot more time instead of you needing to find individual animals which are going to add next to no materials. You can add a cougar to your trader business and it's going to give you about 30 materials, whereas a legendary animal is going to give you anywhere between 30 to 60 depending on what that animal is. And if you buy into the trader hunting wagon, what you can do is actually store these legendary animals in the back so that whenever you do need materials for the trader, you can donate them. And in all honesty, as long as you have unlocked the trader role, there is no reason for you to not have a full max 100% trader material bar because it is that easy. And this will then make the trader even more passive. And now you've just unlocked the best way to make money within Red Dead. If you head over to the trader, you can set that up. Donate the animal materials that you've managed to get from legendary animals, and it should max up the material bar. You may need to do a resupply mission, or you can do my preference at this stage, which is just order materials. At that point, you can then head over to your moonshine shack. Go downstairs, talk to Marcel, get the strongest strength in moonshine, and then add flavoring. I normally go for the flavoring, which gives you $226. 
This isn't the most expensive flavoring, but it's going to give you the most money without needing a collectible. Now, you're just waiting 48 to 50 minutes for the Moonshiner to be done, ready for a delivery, and then the Trader to be done. Not ready for a delivery, but you will need to go through and resupply. With the Trader, you want to get this up to 100 goods, and that's going to take a couple hours. But with the time that you have remaining, that's where you're going to be going through the different collector sets. And yet again, even once you've unlocked the collector, you're going to be going through tarot card swords, tarot cards, pentacles, and family heirlooms. These are the most expensive guaranteed sets. What I mean by that is once you go into the collector role, there are random sets and there are guaranteed sets. The random sets will still give you the exact location if you're using the Jean Rope collector map. But once you actually pick up the collectible, it is entirely random of which collectible you get as part of that set. Whereas with the guaranteed sets, Sets, you can find the specific collectibles as part of that set, go to the location, and you can find that exact collectible. These are a lot easier to complete because you can easily get a set every single day, whereas the random ones, there's some, especially when looking at the coins, where you have a 1% chance of being able to find a specific coin. And if that's the only coin that you need, you're going to have to dig up quite a few collectibles by the time that you actually get it. And it was all entirely random. And as long as you do this every single day, go for the naturist, use the legendary animals for the trader, set up the trader, set up the moon china, and go for the collector sets, you will be making thousands of dollars every single day. But with that said, it's not really needed. It's nice having enough money to buy into everything within Red Dead Online, upgrading all your ability cards, buying all the weapons, upgrading all the roles, buying all the specialist equipment, going through your character customization. But it isn't really needed, especially considering that Rockstar are not pushing any future major updates to this game. There's no reason to have that amount of money anymore. But no matter what your goal is within this game, if you are looking to get money, this is the way to do it. This is the most efficient way in which you can play this game. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see a bit more from me, then I highly recommend clicking the next video on screen. That video is the ultimate beginner's guide to initially starting Red Dead. And even though we briefly went through some of it within this video, there's actually a few slight differences. Because if you're looking for the most efficient way to make as much money as possible when starting this game, then you've seen that within this video. But if you're looking at the most efficient way to get everything, unlock all roles and play this game, then that is completely different. And that video is up next. So click that video and I'll be over there to guide you through absolutely everything.